Supply Chain Broadcast Season One Coffee. Welcome back to an extra special episode of Supply Chain Broadcast. To continue from last week's investigation into flowers, this week we'll be hearing about a cacao supply chain that originates in Ghana. I'm joined by James Crowley, a student of the International Development Masters at the University of Amsterdam. Thank you for having me. Great to be on the show. So yeah, I'm studying a master's in international development and I was researching into the cocoa sector um, in Ghana. The research title was Traceability, Transparency and Certification. So I was looking into fair trade certification schemes as well as traceability systems that communicate those certification schemes. Very interesting. How did you get into doing this project? So originally I was super interested in how to make global supply chains more sustainable. Initially I was interested in the garment sector and clothing. And what did you get up to on your research visit to Ghana? I was following the cocoa beans from the farmer all the way to the consumer, stopping off um, and researching at each tier and each each segment of the supply chain. Cocoa is grown at farmer level. It's grown in small pods, dried and then bulked up and processed and traded up through the supply chains. So in Ghana's case, the farmers will sell to a purchasing clerk. The purchasing clerk then bulks the cocoa together in a small warehouse and will will sell to the district clerk who overlooks a larger area. And then from the district warehouse, the cocoa beans are transported to the international ports. In Ghana, there are three, Tema, Tagrade and Kumasi. Kumasi being an inland port. So that's a bite-size overlook of the supply chain of cocoa. Supply chain Thank you, James, for that description of the cocoa supply chain. Next, I'm interested to know if there were any challenges that might exist at different stages in the supply chain, ones that maybe came out of how the system operates as a whole. So at the farming level, the main issues were how to increase the yield. The higher the yield, the more money they can get from the purchasing clerk and therefore live, live a higher, higher living standard. So in terms of that, it's how well trained the farmers are um, with the use of agricultural techniques. I think another issue at the farmer level is the inclusivity factors of fair trade and certification. These fair trade and certification organisations demand certain aspects of the farmers. Some farmers can adhere to these, others can't because of many reasons. So so some are sort of subordinated and some are included and, of course, helped a lot. In terms of the relationships between the farmers and the purchasing clerks who the farmers sell to it's 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 very based on trust it's a socially embedded economic dynamic really and sometimes if the trust isn't there then the purchasing clerks can can mistreat the farmers and and buy their cocoa for less or misrepresent the weighing of the cocoa in exchange for money it sounds like a lot of responsibility is put onto the farmers in the cocoa supply chain, not dissimilar from the coffee supply chain that we followed in Kenya. But what about other parts of the supply chain? And in relation to traceability, what issues are there? When the cocoa is traded upstream the supply chain, it is bulked. This means traceability information of the origin of the cocoa is somewhat lost. A lot of certification companies like UTS and Fairtrade International and Rainforest Alliance, they try to keep the geographic origin of the cocoa by keeping it segregated throughout the supply chain. That makes sense. But it sounds very expensive. Are there any other ways that international companies are dealing with traceability in their supply chains? 
a lot of companies are trying to pursue mass balance traceability. It enables certification companies to certify their chocolate and their cocoa without having to prove the geographic origin. The output of cocoa from a certification organization's farms is totaled and weighed and then the equivalent weight is bought from the ports. So you could see it as sort of segmented traceability. Um, Some are fans of it and some are not. It sounds like one solution to a very complex problem. It does bring me on to my next question, though. What's the power structure of the cocoa supply chain? And who has the most responsibility within it? In the case of Ghana... The Ghanaian government um, overlook everything in the supply chain through their company CocoBod, which is Ghana's cocoa board. So yeah, interestingly, all cocoa exported in the supply chain of Ghana has to be sold to CocoBod and then resold again to international companies, global agribusiness companies. But now as the cocoa market is becoming more and more liberalised, multinational corporations have more of a stronghold in the sector and in, in the supply chain. So... When there's a motivation to source sustainable cocoa, this is mostly done by international organisations. Ghana's government isn't that motivated to export sustainable cocoa. They will help with collaboration in assuring it's exported, but they're more concerned to keep their cocoa quality high because Ghana's cocoa is is seen as a a medium to compare other cocos. It's, It's very high quality cocoa. Interesting. The Kenyan coffee market is also experiencing a shift in power due to liberalisation. Lastly, I was wondering if you have any ideas or thoughts about improving the situations in the supply chain. Based on your research, are there any areas to focus on or particular issues that need addressing? It is key to make the supply chain more transparent. Traceability in and of itself is is just communicating information. It depends what information you want to communicate. Um, so transparency of the supply chain is aided by traceability, but it's not everything. It really is the international companies which have the demand from consumers to be more sustainable who are leading the way, even though it's argued that they perpetuate the market economics that keeps the farmers living below the poverty line. Some are initiating technology that allows for more transparency, for example, using electronic weights when the farmers sell to the purchasing clerks so that the purchasing clerks can't mistrust the farmers. Um, these electronic weights then, through an internet connection, immediately weigh the cocoa and um, convert it into the price, which is determined nationally by the Ghanaian government. Technology will definitely help transparency if used in the right way. There's also talk of blockchain, the new buzzword in sustainable supply chains. It's not in use now for for cocoa. I don't think in Ivory Coast either or, or other nations, but yeah, things to look into. So that's it for another episode of Supply Chain Broadcast. Thank you very much to James for coming on the show and sharing all your intriguing research about Ghana. Thanks very much for having me, yeah. And we'll see you next time, when we'll be in Mathare, Nairobi, to find out how a small-scale hand coffee roastery works. See you!